Hey, welcome back everybody. And today we're up in the office and what we're going to do is we have the ECM for a S10 from Jason from Jason's Garage. I'll put a link in the description down here. Now he has 2002 LS 5.3 that he did a carburetor conversion on and he wanted his ECM programmed to run the timing table instead of buying the $400 MSD box, which everyone's going to say, well, why don't you just buy the box? Well, I'm going to show you why that this is. So we're just setting up the timing table to where it'll run, you know, like it's both. I have another camera down here, which is going to show a couple key things that you're going to need to know when doing this on an HP. And if any of you have maybe things that I've missed or stuff like that, go ahead and pipe down in the comments. But everything I researched online, did all the homework, this should work out very, very well. Not using this carbureted setup, obviously, is not going to use an airflow meter or a map sensor. So uh, we set up the timing table according to the map sensor because the map sensor controls, which we're going to show here under uh, manifold absolute pressure. KPA is uh, comes up on the graph as 15, so 1.5. All right, so as long as we keep timing table inside this graph, which is going to be pretty linear, but this is how the computer is going to read the timing table. Should be good to go. We turned off uh, everything for the emissions, the rear O2s, and before we go any further, yes, this vehicle is for drag racing only. Not, It is a non-highway vehicle. It is for off-road use only. So with that disclaimer, this vehicle will never be driven on the road, so taking off some of this emission stuff is perfectly fine. Okay, we're going to eliminate all the DTC codes that would pop up uh, in this ECM normally. The injector codes, the rear O2 codes, all the EVAP. I'll show you all the codes that we eliminated and how to do that. But so let's get off of the scanner here and let's go to our actual editor and we'll go ahead and um, read the vehicle. which I've already loaded the tune in. You go ahead, now this, this other camera capture this, you go ahead up into flash, you hit read vehicle, and then the read button. Wait for your dongle to flash. Go ahead, hit read, and it's, and it's pulling the vehicle now. And this takes a few seconds, so we'll just skip forward here a second. And you can see by this, the tune we're working on is a P01 tune. Uh, this is for a GM Gen 3 V8 or V6. Uh, so basically the 411 PCM. And this came from a 2002 Chevy Silverado 5.3 V8. Uh, the P01 tune here was the VIN number from the original vehicle. That this uh, engine and ECM setup came out of. And that's the same engine, ECM, and wiring harness and everything that Jason's going to use in the vehicle. It's a very simple, very cheap way to do this. And why this has taken a few seconds, let me show you the setup we're working with here for my tuning. This is his ECM. Uh, this is the setup that I made. Uh, ignition switch for power on and off, a USB port, power in the ground, and the dongle that plugs into the computer. Very simple setup. Anybody can do this. If you can de-pin one of these bars and leave the four in that you need, you got yourself a desk set up. And this is running off of uh, 18 volts and one amp. Plenty, you say, oh, it's 12 volts. It's fine, okay? It's only gonna take so much. It's not gonna swallow the whole 18 volts. So it works great. Use this on a bunch of vehicles, no problems. All right, um, it's read the vehicle. And it wants to give it a name. We'll give it this Jason's Tune Carb S10 name. Okay, now it's saved. Um, first thing we do is we go into this engine tab right up here. And what pulls up first is your spark table. Now this is what we're after here, okay? And the high octane and the low octane tables are exactly the same. I'll show you both of them together. And here's a screenshot in case this camera didn't pick it up real well. And real simple, along the top of the graph, 
is engine RPM and down the side is basically your air mass. Okay, and this is how the stock computer reads fueling and everything else. We don't really need any of that. And like I said, this the map's set in one spot, so we're gonna it's gonna be linear all the way across the graph here. And so basically what's happening here is your your crank timing, and this is the way I have it set up. You have you know, if you don't like the way I have it set up, leave me a note in the comments and stuff like that, and we can talk about it. You have, let me go live here, um, 400 to 600 RPM. So basically you're cranking RPM that the computer's going to see to fire up the vehicle is set at 12. And it's set at 12, at hot, cold, and I'll show you where those adjustments are later. Uh, anything, once the vehicle actually idles, 800 um, to 1,000 RPM is 22 degrees. And then 1,000 to 1,600 is basically 23 degrees. And 1,800 to 2,800 is 30 degrees. And at 3,200 RPM, we're all in and we're at 34 degrees of timing. 34 degrees, talked about it with Jason. I agree, he agreed, that's where we want to set the table. Can we adjust this? Yes. Is it easy to adjust? Yes. Can we fine tune some of these steps to blend them a little bit more? Yes. But this is just to get the vehicle running like it should. The fine adjustments are easy enough. And from everything that I researched online, this should get the vehicle running as expected, like you would with a carbureted V8 with a normal spark advance curve versus the engine speed. All right. Uh, again, high octane and low octane settings are exactly the same. And then this is um, engine coolant temperature uh, cranking spark. So it will adjust that base 12 degrees of timing based on the engine temperature. Uh, the colder it is, the more advanced it's going to give the engine while it's cranking. And the hotter it is, the less advanced it's going to give the engine while it's cranking. Makes sense, right? Um, I don't know how much this engine coolant table is going to affect it when we have a linear spark table in the mass, but we'll find out. And again, uh, if we need to adjust this, this is the only thing I couldn't really find out on, online to, for an adjustment, but it's a real simple adjustment if it needs to be adjusted. Knock retard. We left, uh, right now, Jason doesn't have his knock sensor set up, but we talked about it last night. And he's probably going to set those up because in the future, if he would want, if he would want to run, say, a nitrous setup or any kind of boost, you need the knock table because if the engine sees knock, it's going to pull timing so you don't damage the engine. Left it at 8 degrees, um, turns it on, like I said, and if he wants to run just like a 100 shot, a nitrous eight degrees of knock is plenty. Motor be completely safe with a nice little shot of juice with that setting. There's a torque management table. We did some adjustments to this. I don't think it's really going to affect anything. He's running a power glide, but just to keep the computer brain happy, um, we set reset this max torque for 700. I believe this is like 325 in the stock configuration. It does all the base calculations, so, you know, okay, primary VE. From doing the research online to keep the computer happy and to keep the spark linear to where you basically put it without the computer making a bunch of adjustments, it goes off the VE table. Now, again, this is um, a stock table. But Jason did put a cam in it, so we, we bumped up the settings to where you would normally, if you had a fuel injected LS and you put a cam in it, these would be the same adjustments to make it run correctly. And I'll, I'll put a table in here, and again, I'll pop in a screenshot if the computer's not picking it up too well. Idle base point, again, the idle's going to be set, you know, by the carburetor, but 
uh, to keep the computer happy and to keep things all on a level basis. Um, we set all of our idle settings and these are um, engine coolant versus, you know, in gear, AC on, in gear, AC off, park neutral, AC, all that stuff. Everything across the board we set at 850. Again, so this is about where this engine is going to idle and this will keep the computer happy. It will keep the spark table in this linear format as we set it up. Hopefully it doesn't make too much adjustments of it on its own. If it does, again, we can, they're easy enough to change, but making it 850 across the board uh, for all the coolant temperatures keeps everything consistent and all the adjustments for idle and idle speed and all your adjustments for idle and idle speed will be done, you know, at the carburetor. Okay, engine die. The next tab over here is the engine die. Now, um, if you want the computer to report, if it sees an error, basically check the box. If you want it to ignore that, you uncheck the box. And, and here we can tell, and I'm going to have to wear these for a second. Mass airflow, uh, air intake temp, and, and map pressure. We get rid of all those so they're not causing an air code. Uh, we left in coolant temperature sensor for uh, circuit low, circuit high, and out of range. Just so if he does have a problem with the coolant, it gets getting hot or whatever, stuff like that, it's going to give him a warning. Um, we got rid of uh, the throttle position codes. We left the top two, bank one and bank two, sensor one, installed. So as he's running and, you know, this thing's going down the track and stuff like that, these O2 sensors are going to record. They're going to record a lean or rich condition. So when you go back and review the data after a run, you could say, hey, this is, uh, you know, at this RPM and, you know, this much in, into the run, we were going lean or we were going rich, and you, you can make the adjustments that way. Um, you know, you can always pull out the plug, see how it did for the whole run, but this will, in different phases of the run, give you a real good idea of how, you're, how this carburetor is feeling this engine. And again, left on, you know, bank two sensor one, bank one sensor one, all the Sensor 2, which is your rear O2 sensors normally, which is after the cats. This is obviously a drag race only application, so no catalytic converters. We turned off all those codes. Turned off the fuel trim. Uh, turned, off the, turned off the injection circuit warning. Uh, trans temp. Transmission fluid over temperature condition. It doesn't have a temp sensor on the transmission. So we took that off. We left the knock sensors like we said before. We left crank position. We left camshaft position. We left all um, we left all the ignition coils. So if we see if we have a problem with one of the ignition coils, it'll show up. Uh, EGR was taken away because we don't have an EGR valve. Uh, secondary air, air secondary air injection. So the air pump gone. Uh, EVAP gone, fuel level sensor gone, uh, fan control circuit one, two, um, we left those off if Jason wants to run the fans through the ECM where they come on at a certain temperature and stuff like that, we can certainly set all that up, but for right now he does not. Uh, AC codes and stuff like that, I left in system voltage, system voltage high, system voltage low, so if we do have a charging issue and the ECM is, you know, seeing super low voltage or super high you know we'll get a warning of that and we can repair accordingly brake switches and things like that just stuff that we're not um gonna really ever use because there's no um reason for it we lift those off uh and if you really need these one by one and stuff like that email me, call me, stuff like that. Or I can, if you want a copy of this tune, you can go ahead, email me. I'll shoot you my address, send me a thumb drive. I'll load it onto a thumb drive for you, send it to you, and you can more than, more than happy to have you use it.
All right, moving on. Uh, trans Prindle, just Prindle equip, just click none. Uh, shift pressures, torque converter, torque management, don't need any of that. Trans Diag, we don't need to play with this. Fuel system, um, we can basically, don't need to do much with that. For the VATS control, we went to none. So we don't need anything disabling the engine, stuff like that. So we can either start with a key or if he has a starter button, the computers can be completely happy with it. It's not going to shut off spark or try to shut off fuel or anything like that. Um, again, the fans, um, first stage comes on at 140. If he wants to wire the ECM to control the fans, they're going to come out at 140 degrees. Okay, easy enough. And the AC button, you know, we don't have AC on this vehicle. Speedo, the last tab on the top here. Um, we just put the speed limiters uh, basically to 190 miles an hour. Again, not that there's a speed sensor in the vehicle reporting to the ECM, but just to keep the ECM happy so it doesn't see anything weird and go, oh, you're going too fast. Um, let's throttle you down. So, those are the changes we made to Jason's ECM to get her to Jason's 411 P01 ECM on an LS 5.3 to run a carburetor. Now we're going to box this back up, send it back to Jason. He's going to plug it into the vehicle. Go ahead, get the vehicle fired up, and give me a report back. But again, uh, everything that we've researched online and from trial and error on some other vehicles. This should make this vehicle run very, very, very nice with a carburetor. Okay, guys, uh, that's it. Questions, comments, concerns, let me know in the comments. Again, if you need a copy of this tune, just go ahead, email me. I'll shoot you my address. You send me a thumb drive. I'll load it on the thumb drive, and I'll send it back to you. That MSD box is $400 plus, plus, plus. This was an ECM he already had. It cost $100 for the credits on HP tuners at 12 bucks for shipping to, to send the computer to me. So for basically 112 bucks, well, 124, because I got to send it back to him. Timing table set up just like you would for a $400 MSD. And if this goes bad, this computer is 50 bucks in a junkyard and another MSD box is another $400. So that's why we're doing it this way. So again, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Again, kind of a long rambly video. But I feel it's important because I didn't find a whole lot of tuning information when setting up a carburetor on an LS motor with a stock ECU. So there we go. All right, everybody. Thanks. And we'll see you next time.